Shout out to Don Chaos. We know you got our back and we got your back too, man. Denver, Colorado all day, brother. We're definitely going to hook up with you. Much love to Carnival Spirits for, for putting us on as well on this YouTube, man. Shout out to you, Don Chaos, for, uh, I mean, what is this episode, like 126 or something like that? Yes, yeah, right. sir. You've been putting in work, bro. Respect. <laughs> Y'all doing some shit for the community and fam out there appreciate it so just keep doing what y'all doing you know what i mean congrats to don chaos for 1000 subscribers whoop, whoop. keep well, it going congratulations, man. Don chaos. yes keep it going man good luck to you fucking don chaos and fucking hell yeah on your thousand fucking followers because you know who it is it's Ouija mac bitch shout out to carnival spirits and fucking shout out to don chaos one time you know what's going on this is my brother Everyone, Don Chaos and Brother Lin Chung here. Yeah, Carnival Spirits, what's up, man? Don Chaos, what's up? It's your boy, Brother Lin Chung. We out here for my best job. Fuego Flays and my nigga Don Chaos, what's going on, B? It's my brother right here, my boy. Scoot the left, scoot the left. Yo, what up, y'all? This is Don Chaos, and I'm with a very legendary man. Go ahead and introduce yourself. He's Earl. Hey, Sean. Yeah, we at the gathering, y'all. Yo, 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 yo. What is good, everyone? Y'all already know who this is. This is Mr. D to the O to the N to the C to the H to the A to the O to the S. Your friendly neighborhood, J U W G A L O, the Carmen Millionaire. If you don't know, now you know. And if you still don't know, chat, let them hear it. You should know how it goes, you know. This is episode 192, y'all. Episode 192. So make sure you guys are sharing this all over social media. We are live on YouTube. We are live on Facebook. We are live on Twitch. We are live on my personal Facebook, YouTube, as well as Carnival Spirits. Of course, tonight, we are going to be joined by the Hatchet Man Project. Very excited to do this interview. Of course, it happens conveniently on the 17th of this month. Could have planned it any better, y'all. So, yeah. What's up, everyone? Hopefully, you're doing good. And, yeah. Let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes. And I'm going to send the link to our guests. Sadly, the whole band isn't going to be available, but the front man of the band is still going to be joining us and answering questions that y'all might have. And who knows, I might even just ask the questions that some of y'all are probably wondering. So I'm going to go ahead and send them the link and refresh my stuff so I can see the chat.
Thank you. All right, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and send our guest the link. So bear with me. And bear with me if I don't see everything in the chat. Sometimes I don't catch everything in the chat. So bear with me. Okay, there we go. All right, we're back. Now we just are waiting for our guests to join. Holy shit, we have 12 viewers. Come on, I know you guys can do better than that. You guys know this show, we always keep it 100. We just talk news, anything going on in the Juggalo underground world. And then, of course, we have guests or guests on the show to help promote our guests because that's what we like to do. Because your boy loves to promote people and really help people. Yeah. So let's go ahead and catch up on the chat. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yep. A lot of people remember that. Thank you. Exactly, live as fuck. Hell yeah. So of course, you guys know, as we were waiting for our guests, Ouija Max Problem Children mixtape is out. His collab mixtape EP, you might have it, with Ricky Hill, which is actually very dope. You know, I'm enjoying it. I think the more y'all listen to it, the more you guys might enjoy it. Because, you know, there's a lot of very heavy guitar on there. And that's one thing I'm really loving about this Ouija Mac release is there's a lot of heavy guitar on there. There's actual live guitars on there from Devereaux. And if you guys should know, Devereaux is one of the hottest producers out there in the game right now. You know, he's did done production for so many artists. Not only does he done production for Ouija, he's done production for ICP. He's done production for Scum and a lot of LSP. He's done a lot. He did production off the self-titled Wicked Wood album. Some production off of there. Yeah, I'm excited for this episode tonight. Because you guys know, we've always been saying for many years that there needs to be an ICP cover band. And it seems like Everything's been answered. We do have an ICP cover band. And it's an ICP cover band in the form of a metal band, which is dope.
But yeah, this Ouija Mac release is really good, you know. And like I said, mean Lady Chaos said in our first thoughts of the Ouija Mac release, what do you guys want to, who do you want to see Ouija Mac do like a full on collab project with or an EP or mixtape? You know, I have quite a few who I'd like to see Ouija Mac work with. I'd like to see him do a collab EP with maybe like, huh. I have no, I, I have to think more as the night goes on, but yeah, our guest is waiting in the great green room. So everyone, you know, if you're drinking something, drink something. If you're smoking something, smoke something, smoke some weed. And yeah, so I'm going to bring our guests on. So without further ado, let's give them the proper introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Hours of Chaos podcast, the one and only. Whoops. And I totally fucked that up. The Hatchet Man Project. What's up, man? Whoops, your mic's off, man. There we go. That should have worked. Let's see. Let me try refreshing. If you're still in the green room, man, try closing out and opening back up. Technology is very dumb sometimes, y'all. It really is. Yeah, try join. If you're watching still, man, make try rejoining. Sometimes you got to do that. get our guests a chance to join back up. Sometimes you just got to do that. Yes, thank you guys for waiting very patiently. I do very much appreciate it. Appreciate the patience. As the saying goes, patience is a virtue.
What's up, the real freak? I see you there in the chat. What's good? Atchman Project, if you can hear me, you might need to put the camera closer to you. What is up, Charles? What's good? Whoop, whoop. How's everyone else? Doing let this night. Why we are Waiting, I actually thought of someone who I would really like to see Weech Mac do a full-on project with, whether it's a mixtape or an EP or a full-on collab album. I would really love to see, and yes, this is basically inspired off the track that Ouija Mac did recently off of Problem Children with DJ Paul, the track. So I would like to see a full-on mixtape or even an EP with Ouija Mac and DJ Paul. Or even Ouija Mac and Seed of Six and DJ Paul. That'd be dope. Yeah, let me try sending the link again. Oh, there we go. I think we got it. Can we get it? Perfect. My daughter had to come fix it. <laughs> Don't you just love technology sometimes? Yeah, they're roadies in the making. They just don't know it yet. Right. How are you doing, man? Good. I'm going to bring you a little closer. Doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. What conveniently how we were able to make this happen on the 17th. I know. What a perfect date, huh? Right. So yeah, I guess what we'll do is you just like give a brief introduction, like little history, how long you've been doing this. And then, yeah, we will ask with the questions. So really with music, everybody in the band has been involved in the music yeah. in and around the Detroit area for, uh, for quite some time. 
Um, the opportunity came up for a group of us to get together and we've all listened to ICP for a real long time. So the thought of getting together and taking our whole metal side of things that we do, cause we all do hard rock metal and, uh, you know, there's just some stuff that sticks with you in this case through decades, uh, which is, you know, our love for ICP. Um, it was kind of a no brainer. Let's get together. Let's see what we can do and try to convert some of these songs into a more rock and metal -ish style, you know? Um, uh, and the whole, the whole goal was the gathering, you know, let's, let's form this and let's put on some fucking masks uh -huh. and, and see if we could get chosen to play the gathering. And that was our whole goal. Uh, uh -huh. So, uh, it's crazy. Cause you know, when we formed the band, uh, the submission video that that's the origins that you can see on YouTube with uh, dead body man and fuck the world. Uh, uh -huh. That was actually our second band practice when we filmed that. Oh, that, was, yeah. that was the second time that, that us guys had gotten in the same room and, and jammed them songs, which is mind blowing that, uh, you know, we could make it pop off like that. Uh -huh. uh, but, you know, everybody, they studied the shit and they put in the work. And that's one thing I love about this band is everybody puts in so much hard work to make sure that everything's done right for the juggalos, you know, and, and for that whole, the whole fan base, um, you know, the way we look at it is, is, you know, we're playing ICP's music to a fan base that loves their shit. So we have to make sure that we do it right out of respect. You know what I mean? Exactly. And you guys just so happen to be juggalos yourself. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I think everyone's been saying for years that there needs to be an ICP cover band, like for many years. And I think all the stars line and I think it's cool how it, you guys are doing that. And it's in the form of a metal band. Yeah, no, we have a lot of fun doing it. And, you know, with me personally, with, with singing, I already know all the songs. So, it's, oh. I, you know, it's a, it's a walk in the park. Um, you know, these are songs that I've been singing and, and partying to and, and blasting in the system and in my rides for many, many years. So uh -huh. it's great. We love it. So how did you like individually like discover like ICP? Like what's the first thing like you remember hearing that drew your attention? I'm like, obviously, I know you told me y'all are from Detroit, basically. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, back in the day, it. it it kind of started with, with my personal passion for listening to Esham. Um, when Esham first came out and I got my hands on that red tape, I mean, show's over, you know, that, that was incredible. Um, and then one of my friends, uh, he had put, he had turned me on to ICP. We're talking early nineties. Um, I'm like, wow, this is fucking dope. You know, this is, this is awesome. You know, it was that wicked shit, but in a different way, you know, um, I just, I fell in love with it. And, and that goes for the rest of the guys in the band, you know, we're, we've been around the block a few times and, and, uh, listened to a lot of different stuff, but, you know, in the metalhead community, you know, when you're, when you're partying and stuff, you got to kind of watch what kind of rap music you play at the party. If you're taking over the radio, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And in the Detroit area and throughout Michigan, uh, that's one thing you can always put on. You can put on ICP and people are like, oh, that's my shit, you know. Uh -huh. And a lot of people, I hope a lot of people realize that, you know, the older Juggalos, <laughs> a lot of those guys are, they're rockers. You know, they like <laughs> rock and metal. Uh, you know, it's, we've been getting nothing but love for, for what we've been doing. And, and we kind of knew that, that this was something that people would enjoy. Um, that's why we've been putting so much hard work into it. Hell yeah. And I think that's cool that you guys are able to do that because, you know, you can like take like ICP songs that wouldn't normally sound like a metal song and then you can actually make it into a metal song. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun, man. Uh, our lead guitar player, he does, a uh, he does a lot of the, the converting, um, you know, they'll go into the studio and they'll dissect the songs and, uh, you know, the drummer and pretty much everybody in the band. But, um, 
you know, and they, they come up with creative ways to interpret it uh, through our version. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And I'll tell you what, we're in the studio right now and there's some stuff these guys are throwing at these songs that are just incredible. Um, I can't wait for everybody to hear this stuff. And could we actually expect like maybe a, you guys like to be working with psychopathic more like tell us how that came about um well i won't name names but there's a few of us that um regularly get to see the the gentleman over at psychopathic records Uh um the great thing is is that when this all started the key thing with the masks was so they didn't know who we were we didn't want to be picked to play the gathering by who we were you know what i mean we just wanted to be regular people and that was one of the main reasons for the masks in the beginning because we we just didn't want anybody to know we just regular people trying to get on that stage and party with our family and and do it up you know um but now you know of course you get to the gathering cats out the bag they know um but the way we're approaching it is we want everything to be exclusive to psychopathic now i'm not saying you know we have to have any kind of record deal or anything we're we're doing this for respect and and love of juggalos icp the label in general Uh um and that whole scene you know so the integrity of it is just keep it in-house with psychopathic and let them control what happens and the fans like i'd like the fans to be more involved in picking the next songs that we decide to play um, for instance, you know, you know, we're doing everything we can to get back to the gathering next year. Um, and there's a real good possibility that'll happen. Um, we would love to see the Juggalos, you know, come in and say, hey, you know, play this song. We love this song um, and help us determine what we play, because after all, it's it's for them, you know. Hell yeah. So what was actually the first song that drew you into ICP and stuff? Oh, shit. Um, Beverly Kills. I just remember listening to that and just I couldn't stop listening to it. I love 17 Dead. Um, That song is the shit. Yeah, that's like one of my top favorite like ICP EPs of all time. And I have a homie down here in Florida that's actually an old school juggalo. He's been like down since like Carmel or Carnage, and he's actually originally from Detroit. Oh, okay. Yeah. But he knows the deal. He does. Yeah. Um, it, it's, I mean, there's so many badass songs that go back everything off carnival. Um, personally, you know, I wear the ringmaster card. Um, that's my favorite of all of them. Um, just so many cool songs on that that whole cd um but they're all badass i mean we could sit here and it's so hard to pick okay what's the next song we want to do because there's so many badass songs Uh you could do anything off of malenko Uh Uh, jekyll brothers i mean that whole album caters to what we're doing Uh ton of shit off bizarre that that i'd love to do um like I said, it's just, where do you start? There's so much good stuff there. Um, I personally, I would like us to throw in something off terror wheel, um, and Beverly kills, uh, in the future. Um, I like the old school stuff. I like the new school stuff, but it's so much fun to bring back that old stuff, you know, and, and that's what most people know. And, and, uh, they just know it right when they hear it. They're like, oh, shit, that's some old school badass ICP right there, you know? Well, since you said you want to do something terrible, I could see you guys doing a metal version of Schizophrenic. I could just picture it. Yep. I've I've personally threw that one out a few times. Uh, I actually <laughs> don't tell the guys in the band, but uh, I, I've been getting that one down on the side. There's a few that, that I've been messing with uh, down in my studio and stuff. Uh, Just in case, you know, but we like to keep it open for everybody. You know what I mean? Everybody uh, has their input on what they want to do. You know, like with the six of us, we all wear Joker's cards. So off of that first deck, everybody got to pick a song off of that album. 
Um, so we're all equal in, in what we do with this band and uh, decisions made and stuff. So it's a good unit of guys, good core core group. Hell yeah. So what and how did you actually, how did Psychopathic actually contact you? Were they like searching online or did someone recommend you guys or did you guys reach out to them? Well, what, what had happened was is back in, uh, back in March, I saw a post uh, mm -hmm. that said that they were taking open submissions for the gathering. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's pretty much what started it. Uh, right when I re read that, that night, I made a couple phone calls and talked to a couple people about it. And uh, of course, a couple of my, my big time deep into ICP. I mean, they're diehard homies, you know what I mean? <laughs> Um, guys that aren't in the band, but they're my go-tos, um, hit them up and said, what do you guys think about this? You know, what, what do you think would be the right route and all that? Um, and so we, we did the submission video. We hurried up cause we had a deadline. Uh -huh. and we had to cram all this stuff in like two weeks, form the band, pick two songs for the submission video, get them down, film it, edit it. And then submit it. So we sent it over to Jump Steady and just said, hey, we this is we formed this group to play the gathering and rock out for the jugglos. And uh they said, Yeah, we'd love to have you. So it all went it all went great, man. Hell yeah. And what was actually your first like clown show that you remember going to? What's that? Oh, what was the first clown show you like ever went to? Oh shit, man. Back in the nineties alone, I'm going to say there's probably 17, 18 shows that I personally, personally went to. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one, it wasn't my first one, but I remember one they did down at St. Andrews hall and it was a free show. Um, that had to have probably been around like 95, 96, something like that. That was fucking sweet. Um, that was probably the, I think that same show where they play, they film like the, chicken hunt music video probably if i remember possible we did a lot of partying back then so it, they kind of blend together but i mean anytime they did a show we were there i mean i remember one year for hollow wicked i was supposed to have a couple homies go with me down to the old palladium mm -hmm. they did a hollow wicked there and uh i ended up going by myself they they bailed i saw i'm fucking going i don't care if you guys are going or not and that was the shit man um you know, it was cool kind of going by myself and, and just being there and soaking the whole show in and no distractions, you know what I mean? And and hanging out with other people that were, it was just, it was awesome. That night was really cool. And I believe the sampler that year they gave out was, I, I think it was Mr. Rotten Treats. Um, I think that was the Hollow Wicked sampler that they handed out. And, you know, a funny story about that same show <laughs> is uh as i was standing in line this guy's walking down the the line with a box and he's selling these cassette tapes mm -hmm. and he comes up and he says hey man you want to buy one of my demo tapes mm -hmm. and i'm like yeah who is it he goes it's me i said no but who who is it what's your name he goes well i go by slim shady oh that's awesome bro i said oh okay so it was a dollar and it had i believe four songs on it uh, my daughter, my oldest daughter's got the tape somewhere stored away, but, uh, you know, gave him the buck, got the tape. He walked off. I didn't know who he was. Nobody really knew he was just promoting his stuff. But, um, mm -hmm. but that, that was kind of crazy, um, at that hollow wicked. So you can actually confirm that M used to be actually at shows promoting his stuff. That oh, for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've said it for years. If people don't think M was somehow influenced by ICP, there's something wrong. I'm like, it's the proof is in the pudding. Just listen to his early shit. No, he was influenced by ICP, Esham, Kid yeah. Rock. I mean, yeah. those those were, you know, and then you had Dayton family come out. Uh, I mean, those are those are your in my eyes, old school, those are your top ones that came out of Michigan from back in the day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Since then, there's been other good groups and uh, mm -hmm. some, some badass MCs. Um, but yeah, for sure, 100%, uh, he would promote at the ICP shows because I bought a tape off him. So. 
Yeah, that's going to be worth something. So you better hold on to that. That's like a gem to hold on to. Oh, my daughter better hold on to that. <laughs> well, she's <laughs> definitely got a gem. Always remind her, go, you have a piece of history right here. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and it was like six months later, the dude's on MTV. I'm like, holy shit. It's just crazy how small the world is. Like, I like that, too. Like, when I start to, like, see a lot of acts that I know, like, or people that I knew start to blow up, I'm just, like, proud. I'm like, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's how they used to do it back in the day, though, is, you know, street team, man. You got to hit the streets and promote. And that's something that I, I'd like to actually get together with the band and talk to those guys and kind of do some more old school type shit next year, uh, starting in the spring, you know, hitting, cause we're up by uh, Pine Knob Music Theater. That's kind of by us. And that's where all the big concerts go and stuff. And, you know, back in the day, you used to go to them shows and there was bands handing out flyers, demos. You don't see that anymore. Everybody gets on the internet and they, they do it that way, which is fine. There's, it's a good tool for nowadays, but nothing like being at a concert and coming out of that motherfucker with a little buzz okay. from drinking some beers and somebody handing you a demo. Cause then the next day you're like, Oh man, I got this from the show yesterday. Uh -huh. I'm gonna check it out, you know, and see, see what happens with it. But I've got a stack from back in the day. All sorts of bands used to, I would, I would always grab it. You never know what's out there, you know, and what next cool thing's gonna be playing through your stereo. Exactly. And I've discovered like a lot of people just by people handing out stuff like at local shows, like in when I lived in Denver and stuff like I have a whole like just shoebox full of like flyers, like CDs that were given to me at shows. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then you go back years later and you check that out. And you're like, oh, man, I wonder if these guys are still around. And now we got YouTube and stuff. And you get on there and I like, know nope, they don't have anything on YouTube. <laughs> but um. But yeah, something I'd like to get into is, you know, doing some old school street team, hitting shows and, and promoting that way. Well, you guys need a street team down here in Florida. Me and my fiance got you guys covered. Well, me personally, I like to try to hit Daytona Beach once a year. So uh, maybe we'll link up next time I come down there. Hell yeah. Like I said, didn't on the phone with you like. Um, a few days ago, Daytona is actually not that far from me. It's only like a couple hours away. Nice. But I'm actually originally from Denver. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You said you're what, in like the Tampa area? Yeah, I'm like in the Tampa area. All right. And what are some like other shows that you've like enjoyed going to? Like besides ICP, what's like some of like, would be like some of your favorite metal bands that you love? Um, I mean, man, there's so many. Um, of course, Slipknot. Hell yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to the Pantera stuff coming up this next year. That's going to be sweet. Can't wait for that. Um, you know, I used to go to all the Ozfests every year. Uh -huh. Um, there's just so many badass bands. It's hard to. It's hard to name it, but um, me personally, I mean, Corey Taylor, badass front man, uh, Phil, um, one of my top three has got to be Diamond Dave. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't think he was a very good singer, but I'll tell you what, David Lee Roth was a badass front man. Mm -hmm. Same with Scott Weiland, um, you know, Stone Temple Pilots. Mm -hmm. You know, he was... He was one of the best performers out there. And that's just my opinion. Um, but, you know, and the guys in the band, we're all kind of into the same kind of stuff. You know, we, we like that heavy, loud Metallica, Megadeth, Pantera, Slayer. Um, you know, we, we listen to it all, man. And there's like a lot. There is a very big metal scene like in Detroit. Like Detroit has a good history of like rock acts and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah yep and the great thing about like with youtube and the internet is we get to we get to see all that shit you know mm -hmm. i mean if you want to find out something about a band uh you can find them like there's this group uh from mount clemens michigan like they have a very like limp biscuit vibe to them they're kind of like rap metal you probably heard them they're called critical bill they're very dope. oh yeah oh yeah 
we were considering they got a show coming up. Uh, I'll plug your guys' show for you. Uh, the Diesel Lounge on Thanksgiving, they're doing a show with Motown Rage, uh, which we had considered maybe talking to them and getting on that show. But um, right now, since we're in the studio, uh, we got a lot of stuff going on in the recording studio. So we're just trying to focus on that. But in my eyes, that would have been a badass show for us to be on. You got Motown Rage, you got Critical Bill, um, Phil, the bass player, hell of a sound man. Um he does he does sound for shows around Detroit. Uh, currently does some stuff at Harpo's um, in Detroit. So uh, yeah, good, great, great guys. Power Dice, all of them. Yeah, and I've always told people, yeah, it's good to see ICP live, but there's nothing like seeing a clown show in Detroit. There's nothing else like it. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, just the energy alone. You know what I mean. Because everybody from Detroit, you know, we've been listening to them for decades now, you know, and uh, it's just where we, I don't know, when they play a show anywhere around the metro Detroit area, it's almost a must that you have to get your ass there or else exactly. you're, you're missing out. And then you regret it the next day that you didn't go. <laughs> exactly. Like I finally went to Detroit for the first time last year for my very first Hollow Wicked, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. This year's Hollow Wicked was was pretty fucking awesome. Um, everybody did a great job. Ouija was cool. Got to chat with him backstage for a little bit. Uh, dude's funny. Uh, real cool guy, man. I really like that guy. Um, yeah, his stage presence is just energetic. Yeah. Yeah, and he's real positive, man. He was... Uh, Dude, wheels had him up on stage. Um, he just kicking it, just being real. You know what I mean? Hanging out out back, um, just being a cool guy. Uh, he and was like, cool. the too. he's he a was. juggalo that has made it because he was us too. He's always told me numerous times because I'm actually part of his promo team, and that's actually my bro. He's like, you know, I was in the crowd too, just like everyone else. People don't realize that. Yep. No, I I really like the guy. He's, He's pretty cool. I've talked to him a few times. Nothing but uh, nothing but respect for Ouija. Hell yeah. And you guys actually helped with like the Bloody Sunday show. So tell us how that was like doing that. So um, I have the privilege of doing some stuff for Psychopathic here and there. And um, through the past like year and a half, um, I've been called upon to do some setup stuff, which uh, we've incorporated some guys in the group to help out with. Um, it was important for me to let the label know that, you know, they've seen me work, but to see some of the other guys in the band, that they're all hard workers, you know, they all bust their ass and, uh, and are just uh, straight up guys. Um, so, you know, we got to help set up the whole stage, bring in all the props, um, get all that done. We did that for that and uh, Hollow Wicked. Uh, and it's it's an honor to be able to get in there and do production stuff with them too, you know, and do the little things to make sure that that stage and all the props and everything looks badass and ready to go for the crowd when the doors open. Um, you know, just one of the many cool things uh, that the Hatchet Man Project gets to be involved in. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, I gotta tell people when you start to like work with the people that you look up to and then the people you look up to start to give you those props, it's the greatest feeling in the world. Like us at, here at Carnival Spirits, we had the honor of working with Psychopathic 2 in 2008 when they did DCG Con here in Denver. We were actually the people that hosted the backyard wrestling tournament. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's cool to be involved in that stuff, isn't it? Yeah, and then when you hear the clowns like giving you props and saying your name, they're like shouts to all these juggalos on YouTube that do this. They're like Carl Spirits and Don Chaos. I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, no, they're everybody at that camp. They're all cool about stuff like that, you know, giving props and and it's a big respect thing, you know, mm -hmm. um, and trust. You know, they, exactly. you know, with you got to think with with psychopathic, you know you got to have some trustworthy people around too that, that have good intent, you know? Exactly. So, and let me say this, 
the dudes from JCW, um, whenever I run into any of them wrestlers, mm-hmm. they're all cool as hell, man. They're all funny. Uh, they want to, they're just always having a good time, you know, and they're always willing to talk and, and, and chat and just be real, you know? Um, Pondo. And it's cool to hear wrestling stories from wrestlers too. I love to hear all of that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I got to talk to, uh, to Pondo recently. Uh, he's real cool. We got joking around about some stuff. Um, uh, Mercer got to see him recently and had a conversation with him. Another cool guy. Um, yeah, they're all, they're all real cool, man. I'd like to see JCW be able to do some more stuff, but, you know, have, have psychopathic involve them in things uh, in the future. Exactly. A little, more than, a little more than they do. Exactly. I remember back in those days, there was a lot of JCW stuff back in the day. Yeah. And I had the honor of, like having Rude Boy actually here on the show one time, which was very dope. Yeah, that's cool. Rude Boy's just the most awesomest dude to talk to. Also, like all the times when I've talked to him, he's just mad chill. He shares all these cool like stories with me of him growing up in Detroit or wrestling road stories. Yeah, he's he's been around a long time. Dude's got some knowledge of some things, that's for sure. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, with that JCW stuff too, it was something I was kind of kicking around with the guys in the group. Um, you know, that might be a way that the Hatchet Man Project could help out with stuff too. Like, I mean, we'd be down to do more of like a live music slash uh, wrestling event. You know, shit, we'll jam a tune in between each match, set up live on the stage. There you go. Or if one of the wrestlers wants to use a song for like the entrance, you guys perform it live for him. Yeah, yeah. Or I could be like Mouth of the South. I'd go down there as like a manager and, and help people cheat and stuff, you know. <laughs> but but I'd have to get body slammed a couple times or suplexed or something, you know what I mean? Yeah, I used to be in the wrestling industry for a while, but then I stopped doing it. Yeah. yeah it's hard on your body. I mean, these guys, they I don't know. When you sit there and you talk to them up close, man, they are scarred up, taped and stapled back together. I mean, they're, they put their bodies through a lot. I give them props. Yeah. I, I never wrestled, but I was like the senior official. And then I was the cameraman and the color commentator. Oh, the color commentator. That'd be fun. Yeah. My commentating, I, it was really funny. It was like a mixture of like, JR, where you made it look real, but then it was humorous at the same time. Yeah. So it was like when you put JR and King together, basically. <laughs> yeah, that was a good duel. Many years they did that together. And that's one thing I know Detroit's also notorious for is like a lot of the good wrestlers that come out of Detroit and Detroit has a notorious, like, rich wrestling history. Yeah, I've seen Rhino do some stuff recently. Uh, there's this G, uh, GCW that tours around and does stuff. Um, he wrestled through them, and then, of course, he was at uh, Hollow Wicked. I think he was at I do believe he was. Yeah, he's a very underrated wrestler. Yeah. Dude's huge, too, man. I know, and he seems like an intimidating dude, but all the stories I've heard is he's like the most chill dude on the planet. No, true. He is. He's very cool. Very nice guy. You know, you have the Sheik, of course, from Detroit, the legendary Sheik. Yep. We, uh, he did a wrestling event last year in Detroit. Um, uh, he was there. It was a, a thing with him and Kevin Nash. Uh, they were doing oh, nice. that stuff. Um, yeah, all cool guys, man. Yeah, that's one thing I watch on YouTube. Like, Rude Boy, he has a series where he talks about, like, he does, like, little documentary series talking about, like, the rich history of Detroit wrestling. It's really cool. Yeah. Yep. And what is probably, like, if you could pick, what are your top five, like, albums that, like, influenced you or that changed your life, basically? Oh, shit. Me personally? Yep, and it could be a whole wide range. Even the most obscure thing that make people go, interesting. Well, I've been in a hard rock metal band for 20 years, but my biggest influences, top five, 
Mm-hmm. I mean, Esham and ICP are a hundred percent in the top five. Mm-hmm. Um, fuck, man. Stone Temple Pilots love them. Um, mm-hmm. The back when they first come out, I loved Two Live Crew. You know, all, all my buddies, you know, they're listening to Metallica and all that shit, and and here I am over here fucking listening to Ghetto Boys and Two Live Crew and NWA, and I, that was just always my my go to is that old gangster rap. I loved it. Oh yeah. So that's probably where you know, with me doing like the Violent J stuff, uh, you know, I've I've kind of always had the rap mentality with stuff but always enjoyed being in a band you know what i mean um you know i've dabbled into doing different metal growls and stuff like that which i'm pretty decent at it but at the end of the day that's you know you want to do stuff that you want to do and and have fun doing uh that's why it works out great with the with the hatchet man project like with Fermunda doing the the metal shaggy parts you know what i mean mm-hmm. thickening up choruses with with different growls and stuff it gives it that balance, you know, um, and, uh, you know, just <laughs> blending that whole rap and hard rock metal. It's great. Oh, yeah. What is probably, like, your top favorite, like, Eshaan album? So you had to pick, like, me, it's tough, Ooh. but if I had to pick, it's probably a close between Kill the Fetus or Closed Casket. That would probably be it. Yeah, I mean, those are the two powerhouses. Um, but Boom, Boom and I, Words is a classic, too. Yeah. You know, um, Maggot Brain Theory is pretty sweet. Um, erotic Poetry, mm-hmm. real old school. I used to bump the shit out of that, you know. Um, I, there's just so many, you know. They're, it's how can you pick? You know, even a lot of the Nada stuff. You know, you get back into the old school Nada uh, albums; those have a ton of great shit on it. Um, but yeah, yeah I, so my top all, Nada yeah, album is "Do You Believe in God." What's that? Oh, I said my top Nada album is "Do You Believe in God." Yeah, that one's good. Um, Godlike was pretty cool. There was some good ones on that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's it's easy to say any old school stuff, you know, because mm-hmm. that's usually, you know, a lot of times that's the best stuff, like front to back, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, with Esham, I'd say closed casket. Probably front to back is is my favorite. Bruce Wayne, that was pretty sweet though too. Yes. Yeah, I've seen Esham so many times live and. He's just so dope live, especially now that he like has like a live band when he performs too, which is phenomenal. Yeah, we've got him in uh, Detroit. Uh, he's playing at Harpo's Concert Theater on Saturday, uh, and I believe oh. it's Phil on the drums and uh, and uh, Jimmy James on guitar, and he's got another dude on bass. Uh, I believe his name is Ray. I think. But, uh, yeah, I mean, have you listened to Esham's newest stuff? Oh, yeah, I have. But, like, a lot of his old stuff I grew up, like, listening to. Yeah. I like that he's he's doing his thing now. You know, he's got the band. He kind of has, like, this punk, like, punk rock feel to him now, um, which, which I'm digging it, you know? It, which it's, it's also him digging back into his roots. Like, a lot of people don't realize, yeah, he did – was influenced by rap but he was influenced by a lot of like rock and stuff growing up oh yeah yep yeah he's he's been around a long time man he's probably the biggest biggest influence for me to to do my thing because when i started out doing music i didn't officially start being in a band until nine the end of 1999 Uh um i had a couple buddies who would they would jam and they said, Hey man, can we set up on your big old deck? And I'm like, yeah, set your shit up and jam. I'm going to sit here and smoke a joint, drink a beer and listen to you guys. And they're out there jamming. And I'm like, give me that microphone. I just started singing Esham lyrics. Cause 
I knew it all by heart, you know, same with some ICP songs. And that's kind of how I personally got into doing band stuff is these guys just throw out their riffs and, and different things. And I, I didn't have songs written, so I'd sing ICP and Eshan lyrics just to kind of get a feel for what they were doing until I could go home and, and write some original lyrics to it. Fuck yeah. And what is some of like, your like favorite restaurants that you recommend that people that haven't been to Detroit try? Like, of course, everyone, I know everyone's got to try the famous Coney Island, those famous Detroit style chili dogs. Yeah. Um, I'd have to say, I don't know. Lately there's uh there's a couple places around me called Johnny Black's Steakhouse. Um, that place is pretty cool. They got some good food, good atmosphere. Um, to tell you the truth, man, I'm kind of a swing into Taco Bell and get my shit type guy. Yeah, that's how I am. Like, especially back in my days when I would smoke weed heavy, that was like my munchie snack. I would go get like Taco Bell late at night. Yeah. 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 No, I like shit tonight before we're doing this. I picked up a couple uh, hot and ready's from Little Caesars. (laughs) It doesn't take much to make me happy. Oh, yeah. And like, just give me that Italian cheese bread and I'm straight. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just eat like a whole box of that and shit. Oh, yeah. Like when me and my homies were there last year, we actually went to Mexican town and we finally got to try Simmons, which was the restaurant that ICP has referenced so many times in their music. We're like, now we know why they mentioned this Mexican restaurant. It's good food. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we used to hit that a lot back in the day. I haven't been down there in a while, though, to Mexican town. Yeah, where we were staying, we were actually staying in, like, southwest Detroit. We are staying in River Rouge, basically. Okay, yeah. And it's crazy because we were playing, like, Morton's List, and one of my quests was I was supposed to relive history and go to historic spots and really weird conveniently we don't know how this happened but somehow we were just six minutes or less down the street from the dog beats photo location of the famous cover i'm like what the fuck oh yeah i was like what are the odds so did you get to go roam around zug island when you were hanging out we did you could literally see zug island from where we were staying and stuff it's crazy Oh, so it didn't smell that good when you were st- where you were staying then, huh? Mm, it wasn't too, too bad, but you could, like, <laughs> smell the fumes in the air. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right around that area, it gets pretty, uh, give it, a, like, a 90-degree day and hang out. It's, it could be pretty potent. Speaking of Zug Island, you know, I've been kind of curious lately to know what what's up with the guys from Zug Island, the band. I know that's what I've been wondering. I love Zug Island, like Crack Tiles. That's like one of my like top psychopathic albums of all time. I still bump their shit. Like, I, you know, I don't know. I'll tell you what. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do some digging because now that would be a killer lineup. Would be Hatchet Man Project and Zug Island. Agreed. Actually, my f- homie just confirmed in the chat we were actually literally staying on Jefferson Avenue. Oh, okay. Just don't park your car on Jefferson and leave it unattended. I've made that mistake a couple times. Oh, yeah. Luckily, we where we parked the car, it was very well lit and stuff. Yeah. But my homegirl thought, like, the basement in the house we were staying in was haunted because she just felt unease about being in the basement. And then when I went down there, I'm like, now I see why you don't want to be down here by yourself. I feel weird vibes, too. Yeah, there's a lot of places around uh, the Detroit area that they got some uh, creepy shit going on in it. Yeah, like me and my fiance will like watch like paranormal type videos and stuff. I'm like, and we'll be like watching it late at night with all the lights off. I'm like, why do we do this to ourselves, babe? Don't mind me. I'm gonna crack a beer. Oh, it's all good. But yeah, Crack Tiles is like one of my like favorite psychopathic projects. But my all-time favorite psychopathic project of all time will be that original Tales from the Lotus. 
Yeah, they've got so much stuff, so many different projects. Um, I got to see one of the the Killjoy backdrops, huge backdrop the other day, um, with their logo on it. I'm like, that's fucking sweet. <laughs> yeah, that's something I want to see is more Killjoy Club, even if they add new members. Like I've been saying, and everyone can see, I'm like, Ouija would be a good fit for Killjoy Club. Yeah. Well, you know, they have the power to kind of move in whatever direction they want with that. And mm -hmm. uh, with all of their groups, um, you know, I like, you know, super villains. That's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. Dark Lotus. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, that's cool that you could be in so many different projects that they've had the ability to do that and, and work with the people they want to work with and that, um, you know, I'm jealous of that. That's what I want to do. Yeah, I'm still like kicking myself in the butt for like when I was at the gathering a few years ago for not going to see the Zug Isle and Crack Tiles like whole like setup. Like they were performing that album from front to back. I'm like, damn it, I should have seen that. How many years ago was it when they played there? Um, it was like 2009, I believe. Yeah, yeah not 2009, 2019. 2019? Yeah, that was when they were in Indiana. Okay. Yeah, I've actually got a, I got a thing from, man, it had to have been around maybe 06, 05. They did a show in Detroit with Esham. Um, and I've actually got the thing with all of them. I just come across this recently too, and it's been preserved this whole time. It's not like a construction barricade thing where they all signed it and and wrote some crazy shit on it and it just turned up recently and i took a saw and i cut that piece off and brought it home with me oh yeah but yeah if you do dig into that zug island thing let me know because i think we all want to hear some new zug island oh i'm all for that i i think that that'd be you know to tell you the truth like like what you threw out earlier about critical bill i mean really a, a four band lineup out of the detroit area I think a, a sweet show would be the Hatcher Man Project, Zug Island, Critical Bill, and Motown Rage. Fuck yeah. That'd be stacked. Damn right. So, Psychopathic just needs to see this and, and make that happen. Really? And what was actually your first gathering that you remember going to? Oh, shit. Um year was that i think 14 hell yeah right? yeah i heard 2012 or 11 i don't remember which one it was but one of my homies was there and he said that lineup was crazy he said there was a lot of like 90s early 2000s hip-hop and metal and shit yeah to me for me the heyday was the 90s man it was so fresh and and people were just losing their minds and it was now nowadays it's cool because there's like this year's gathering for instance you know you walk around and everybody's just so chill and and helpful with each other and looking out for one another which they did it back then but it was a little different you know uh -huh. I, people were fucking going bananas over this shit um just the intensity alone um, it, we we got hooked on that shit man like I said, there were probably 17, 18 shows just in the 90s alone. Um, every time they played, we we went. There was a group of us that would go. Same with the Esham shows. We we never missed an Esham show. I think I'm probably at close to 30 Esham concerts that I've seen. Yeah, I've lost count how many times I've seen Esham. I know it's a lot, just like I know I've seen The Clown so many times that I've like lost count. I used to, and I've just lost count. I just go, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, people go back to, to things they like, right? Exactly. I mean, I've even brought my mom to a show, and she's – She's not fully into the music, but I brought her to a show and she still had the best time of her life. Oh, yeah. My mom's seen Esham. She's seen ICP. She's been able to hang out and talk to to all those guys. Um, yeah. 
pretty crazy when you can see your mom sitting there chilling out partying and drinking with those guys too so dad watching them vibe out <laughs> yeah yeah no i everybody in the group you know that's the thing is everybody in this band um they've all experienced a lot of stuff they've all been doing this for many many years and they're all professionals at what they do um there's so many cool things in store that we have going on right now that people are really going to have their fucking wigs split back dude it's the studio shit that we got going on is badass uh the bass player he does all the studio stuff for us um he's got his own uh shit set up right at his house uh he works his ass off puts in a lot of hours mm -hmm. uh, I think his, he has Jinx Proof is his studio. Um, dude puts in a ton of hours. Um, but, you know, we get these emails with, with these mixes and shit. And it's like, wow, we can't wait for everybody to hear this stuff. It's very exciting, but it's it's crazy because nobody's heard it yet. You know what I mean? Um, exactly, because a lot of people have been saying, are we going to get a falling album? And can you confirm that? Oh yeah, it's coming soon. We're we're not trying to rush anything. We want to make sure everything's done right. And uh you know, and and we're also not the type of band to like me personally, I like to go in there and do a one take vocal. Mm -hmm. I want the album to sound exactly like what we're gonna sound like live. What takes the time is you know, everybody's got a nine to five, everybody works a job. Some of our schedules don't line up. Like tonight, there's a couple of the guys that wanted to be here that couldn't. A um, couple of the guys, they just don't like to talk, you know, <laughs> which is cool. Um, but, you know, when you get six people that all have jobs and, and families and lives and stuff, it's it's trying to find the time to get in there and do it. Um, exactly. But we're getting it done, man. It's, it's, it's very, very close to being done. I'm not going to give a time frame because I don't want to let anybody down, but very close. Um, and really the first thing that's going to happen when the album's done, it's going to directly get handed to Jump Steady. Um, we want him to listen to it and we want them to have first dibs and say on anything that has to do with us. Um, that's just how we, we want it, you know. Um, if they say, Hey, you guys are dope as fuck and we really like your stuff, but you know, have a nice day, then we'll figure out what we're doing next. But for right now, we want to leave, uh, you know, our fate and our future up to psychopathic and kind of let them dictate what we do next. That's what we would like. Hell yeah. And you guys definitely got our support. Like. And can we expect like you guys to get an official store like running? Cause like when I seen your guys' jumpsuits, I'm like, I would totally rock one of those. Or I would rock a Hatchet Man Project ski mask with your guys' logo with the Hatchet Man and the pentagram. Yep, everything is in the works right now. So when we started our Facebook page, um <laughs> we did the band page, mm -hmm. but the page that we've been using is actual is a as a personal page because uh -huh. you have a personal page to start a band page. Uh -huh. That's why it's the hatchet man project, uh -huh. but we're at our 5,000 max. So what we're working on right now is setting up the band page and we're going to start diverting everybody over to that band page. Uh -huh. There's a website that's being worked on. Um, that'll have a store and everything. We just don't want to put anything out until everything's done proper and, and ready to go. And then we're going to unleash all that shit and it's all going to happen soon. There'll be songs for download. There'll be merch for purchase, um, all sorts of cool shit. Well, you might be surprised because me and my fiance are probably going to be the first ones to get like official, like the hatchet man project, like tattoos. And when we do, I'll send that to you. Hell yeah. Now we have talked to uh, Tom Wood and he said that he would be willing and interested in coming up with our original logo that we will be moving forward with, which would be like our album cover. The only uh problem is mr wood is a very busy man 
Yes, he is. Um, and it and it would take a long time to uh, to get that done, but we still want him to do something for us, and we are going to work that out. That's no different than with like the float. Um, I would like us to be on the float next year. Um, oh I think, yeah, you know, really the those are the two main main shows as far as I'm concerned, and I think the band feels the same as that. The gathering, and if we could add the float. I mean, where are you going to perform and, and see more juggalos in the crowd? And that's what our existence is, is it's, it's for the juggalos. You know what I mean? That's, that's why we're here to give them something awesome and fresh to listen to a little spin on the shit that they already love, you know? Hell yeah. And I would definitely love to like, try to get a spot for you guys to perform down here. Or like when I talk to you, on the phone, I'm trying to put together like an annual event that I want to do called Karma Fest, where we have these acts come and perform. And it's like a charity event every year, which is dope. Yeah, that sounds cool. Where do you do that? Right in the Tampa area? Or? Yeah, I'm going to I'm trying I'm going to try to figure out what places like venues could host that and stuff. <clears throat> yeah, keep us posted on it. Um yeah, we get we get a lot of offers to do different things and we get a lot of people hitting us up wanting to do collaborations and everything and uh -huh. so for anybody listening that's thinking about hitting us up or has with collabs uh -huh. you know we've had some very talented people hit us up wanting to collab but as of right now we're not doing that respectfully um we're focused on just doing this album and getting it into psychopathic's hands and seeing what they think about it. Now, to me, the best way to go about doing collabs is if we cross that bridge to where we start doing originals at some point, mm -hmm. I think that would open the door for the collabs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's been a lot of talented people that have been hitting us up. Um, they send us their, their stuff all the time. Check us out. Check me out. Check this out. Um, and I'm not going to get into any names and all that because I don't want to single anybody out and make other people feel bad or something. But um, keep it coming. Hit, you know, hit us up on our messenger, the Hatchet Man Project. And uh, we do watch that stuff. We do listen to it. Um, but there's a lot of messages that come through. So don't be mad if we don't hit you back right away. If you guys are asking questions, we try to get to that stuff. Um, but um, there's a lot of traffic coming through that, that messenger. So keep it coming though. We, we do read everything and, and see everything. So. Hell yeah. And you guys definitely keep up the great work and doing what you're doing. Like, I said we got you got our support here on the Hours of Chaos podcast and Carnival Spirits, and it seems like you guys are really making some noise. So just keep it up. Yeah, we appreciate uh, you know you inviting us on here. Like I said, um, I speak for the band when I say thank you. Um, this has been great. It's been nice, and this has been the first. Fermunda's done a couple interviews with some people, but. Um, straight up through the Hatchet Man Projects uh, uh, spot and, and YouTube and everything. Uh, this is really our first live interview. So you're the first person to get answers to these questions. And I always tell this to all my other guests. You guys are always welcome back on the show. Whenever you guys have something new that you're working on and you want to come on and promote it, just let me know and I will book a spot for you guys. Hell yeah. And when we start uh, releasing some of this music, future videos or something, I'll tell you what, get a hold of you and uh, we'll let you debut uh, some stuff in the future. So you'll get first drop at it before it's uh, dropped anywhere else. How's that? Hell yeah. Or if you guys are filming music videos and you want some extras in your video, I'm down. All right. Hey, I might just have to shoot down to Daytona, take a little bit of drive over by Tampa and mm -hmm. hand that stuff just as an excuse to go on vacation. There you go. And before you go, do you like have any shout outs and can us at Carnival Spirits and the Hours of Chaos podcast get a shout out as well? 
Hell yeah. Shout out to the Hours of Chaos. Uh, we appreciate you having us on here. And uh, nothing but love from the Hatchet Man Project. Hell yeah. You have a great night, man. And like I said, always welcome on the show anytime. Hit me up whenever. Uh, we're we're going to be here for a long time doing this Hatchet Man Project stuff. So uh, looking forward to talking to you again. Hell yeah. Thank you, man. All right. Peace out. Peace. Fuck yeah, y'all. That was dope. Yeah, so that was a Hatchet Man project. First ever official interview. Don Chaos did it first. This is why the Hours of Chaos podcast is a great show. A great live show because on here we talk about anything Juggalo underground related. We promote people. That's what makes the show great. I just, I just feel great about promoting people. And no, Shanzi, I'm not going to take my shirt off. I don't want to scar people. <laughs> but yeah. I think it's very dope that we have an ICP cover band because I know that we've seen some other ICP cover bands and they've just never sounded good. But this is a great ICP cover band because it's not just an ICP cover band. It's an ICP cover band doing metal versions of ICP songs, which is very dope. So I'm excited to see what they got. You guys heard it here. They got a project that they're working on. They are going to get an online store going. Me and Lady Chaos will probably be one of the people to get Hatchet Man Project tattoos. And yeah, I definitely would like to see them at the gathering perform more. I watched their gathering performance and it was very dope. They're very energetic. These dudes have potential. You know, it's always, there are cover bands out there and a lot of cover bands of groups will never do a group justice. These guys, the covers they do, they do it just, they do them justice and they bring very more energy to that shit. It's just so dope. So yeah, there's links down to their socials. There's links down to their Facebook page as well as a link down to their public figure Facebook page. And then there's definitely a link down below to their YouTube channel. But yeah, I would definitely rock a Hatchet Man, the Hatchet Man Project like track suit or even a hoodie and whatnot all that let me see a bunch of these in the chat y'all yeah this was very great their first ever interview first ever here on the hours of chaos podcast and carnival spirits first y'all so yeah let's get into some underground news and some juggalo news you're very welcome aj and nightbot fuck you fuck you nightbot i saw what you were doing in the chat nightbot fuck you <laughs> Get your shit together, Nightbot. <laughs> also, let's see the official Dawn Chaos Cult to Chaos emojis, which are right there. All right, let's. Get into some news. 
upcoming shows. Also, make sure you go check out Store Frontier, of course. There's links to that in the description. Description to where you can get yourself some Carnival Spirits as well as some Dawn Chaos swag. Again, if you guys do get some Carnival Spirits and Dawn Chaos swag, send me some pictures and I will make a video slideshow here on YouTube. Or if you get something, do an unboxing video of it. Yeah. I'm probably going to get a P.O. box set up soon. I'll probably start linking my PayPal in the chat. I do want to start doing more giveaways on here, like on the show, as well as individual giveaways in video format. I want to start contributing to more giveaways because I want to give back to you guys, you know, spread that good karma. You know, I'm taking also suggestions for music reviews. So you guys can start suggesting music reviews and I will possibly even be reviewing probably something that you might even suggest. So I'm still going to get in the habit of reviewing new music as it comes out. And saying first thoughts, me and Lady Chaos plan to do more of that. Like what we did with Ouija Mac and Ricky Hill's Problem Children. We plan on doing like first thoughts and then full on reviews together. But yeah. And I just want to give a shout out to the Zab Show, King Zab, because... In a few days, he's going to be having Chapter 17's own Hex on his show live. So make sure you guys are subscribed to The Zab Show on YouTube. He does so many great interviews. You know, he's interviewed Devro, He's interviewed Darby. He's interviewed Dot Strife. No, he's had a member of Fago Lovers that he's interviewed. Yeah, go check out the Zab Show by King Zab. He does very good interviews. Shout out to King Zab, who we've had on the show as well. We've actually had King Zab on the show. You know, we've had Maisie on the show. Maisie and Zab, you know, who are in Scythe the Gang Triple Six. We've had them on the show, which is very dope. And yeah, I'm excited to check out that interview. I love Hex because Hex goes hard. You know, he has a very West Coast vibe to it. Shouts to West Side Wicked Shit. West Coast Wicked Shit. Also, other shows coming up is the... 17th annual Bury the Living Show. Which, you know, this is something that Dark Half, Damien Quinn, and Gino of Dark Half, this is like an annual event that they do. And this show is going to be having, of course, Damien Quinn of Dark Half performing, rest in peace, Gino, Scum performing, LSP, you know, and light performing, and then also the ninth annual cult shit Christmas is going down, which is having like wrestling and stuff. You know, Black Christmas is going down in Denver. That's a Christmas event that LSP perform does in Denver. They're finally doing another Black Christmas this year, which is dope. I probably unfortunately won't be able to make it yeah black christmas is going down in denver you know looks like we're also going to be getting some new ghost main because ghost main took to his social medias if you guys follow ghost main on social media he took to his social medias and i quote he said to all of 
you two years ago, I released my most unlenting download, sorry, and personal record to date, Ati Khan. Through personal struggle, through perseverance in a crumbling world, we still hear. And on 11 29, the Anicon era comes to an end. And next to a new era begins. So, looks like you can expect new Ghost Mane to come out. Ghost Mane's dope. No one's ever seen Ghost Mane live. You guys really should. I've seen him at the gathering, but I'm definitely never going to miss Ghost Mane whenever he goes on tour because Ghost Mane is just dope. Also, fun fact for those that don't know, Ghost Mane's actually from here in Florida. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, always excited to hear new Ghost Mane. No, earlier I was saying, what? who would you guys like to see Ouija Mac do, like, another collab mixtape or album with? Because let's see, we've had Ouija do that collab project with Death Plus. He's done that collab, he did that collab project with Baby E. He's done that collab project with Star Fox Le Flair. So... I would, like I said, I would love to see Ouija and DJ Paul do something full on together. Ouija Mac, DJ Paul, I would maybe even love to see Ouija and Yellow Wolf do something together. And I'm talking about full on release, not just a song. I would love to see a Ouija Mac and Yellow Wolf song, but if they were to do a full on CD together, I think that'd be dope. I think Ouija Mac and Cody Manson could do a very great project together. I could even see Ouija and Darby doing a full on project together. But yeah, who would you guys like to see Ouija do a full-on collab project with? My thought top ones are DJ Paul, Cody Manson, and probably even Darby. Hell, I'd even like to see Ouija and Scythe, the gang triple six, do a full-on project together. That'd be dope. Or like I said, Ouija Mac and Seed of Six would be very dope. Together like a full-on project. Maybe Ouija Mac and Casey. Cassidy. That'd be dope. So what other news do we got? Also, Thanksgiving weekend is the House of Mask Presents. It's a Kissing Candace show featuring Swollen Teeth and hosted by Sid Wilson of Slipknot. That's cool. Kissing Candace, they got, they're doing a show and they got Sid Wilson of Slipknot hosting that event. That sounds like a very dope time. Kissing Candace is one of those groups I'd love to interview. They're like a juggalo metal band as well, and they do rap or horrorcore, and they're from Canada. They're dope. Also, there is a tour coming around titled The Wasteland Tour. It is Chucky Chuck of DGath. The DRP and Insane Poetry and the Nomads. This looks like a dope tour. This is a very good lineup. So if this tour ends up coming y'all's way, I recommend you guys try to hit up this show. This is a great lineup. 
this is what you call a great lineup. And I want to see everyone in the chat post hashtag underground unity. But yeah, that looks like a very great lineup. We actually saw Chucky Chuck live performing at the Rock the Dock show in Denver. Remember, Shanzi? That was dope. I've always loved Chucky Chuck of D Gaff. That was always one of my favorite acts from Suburban Noise was like D Gaff, Chucky Chuck, and Potluck. Also, Mastermind, the legendary Mastermind has put out a project. You guys can go listen to it on Fagel Lovers. It's called House of Frankenstein Powerhouse, and it's a project that Mastermind of Nodis, shouts to Mastermind, has put out. Go listen to that shit, y'all. Also, the lineup has been announced for the 15th annual Axmas. You know, Axe is performing, you know, Keith Grimm, you know, super famous fun time guys. Sun is performing. That looks like a dope lineup. So if you guys have never seen Axe live, y'all really should. You're in for a very great treat. You know, shouts to super famous fun time guys who played the gathering this year. You know, Sons played the gathering. You know, actually recorded their set, his set for the gathering last year. And yeah. So yeah, let's see a hashtag underground uni in the chat, y'all. Let me go ahead and refresh the chat. Yeah, Chuck Chuck was there. You must have been out smoking a cigarette when he was performing. So he what? No, I don't maybe he was there or I'm getting that confused with something else. I thought he was. What's up? What's up, House of ID? Hell yeah. Choir boy dank. There you go, Shanti. And yeah, who would you guys like to see here on the show? You know, there's quite a few people that I have planned to have on the show on the Hours of Chaos podcast. You know, because this is what we like to do on the Hours of Chaos podcast. We like to promote people and help put people on and just spread that good karma. That's what we do. Now, guys, stay positive here. There's so much negativity going on in the world right now. You know, this scene, Juggalo underground scene is going very strong, y'all. You know, we got to uplift each other. Shouts to the Hatchet Man Project. Very dope. They definitely got our full support. Again, they're always welcome on the show. And you guys saw it here. We had them here on Carnival Spirits and the Hours of Chaos podcast first. Oh, yeah. So, that being said, I'm going to go. I'm going to go get some dinner. And, yeah. Yeah. You guys already know who I am. I'm Mr. D to the O to the N to the C to the H to the A to the O to the S. Your friendly neighborhood, J-U-W-G-A-L-O, the Carmen Millionaire. If you don't know, now you know. And if you still don't know, chat, 
let them hear. This is the Hours of Chaos podcast. You should know the time that this show starts. And yeah, you should know every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. You guys are awesome. And yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Deuces. Underground unity, y'all. And always keep the hatchet in your life, no matter what.